My name is Anna Sunholm. Today we are going to participate in the 2021 ELS project. The goal of this project is to design a lightweight, safe, modern egg landing system that ensures that an egg dropped from a 10-foot distance will not break after it collides with the ground. There are several important physics concepts to know when creating an egg landing system. Firstly, the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Knowing the law of conservation of energy helps us understand how to mitigate the effect of the egg colliding with the ground. Next, we must know momentum and impulse. Momentum is the product of the mass and velocity of an object. Impulse is the product of force and change of time. Impulse applied to an object produces an equivalent vector change in its linear momentum. So here's a quick sketch of design number one. Its dimensions are 10 inches by 5 inches by 3 inches. Uh, its mass is 0.83 kilograms, and its crumple distance, which is um, the straws on the bottom of the figure, is 3 inches tall. Basically, the figure is composed of a cardboard piece with a hole in it. The egg goes inside the hole and is being stuffed around paper towels. There's a duct tape seatbelt around the egg. There's also straws on the bottom to protect the egg from excessive force when it combines with the ground. And there are also pebbles attached to the bottom of the straws. And these pebbles distribute the mass so that the ELS always lands on the straws. When the straw structure on the bottom of the design collides with the pavement, it will actually bounce because of elastic potential energy. So thus, it will mitigate the force that goes on the egg and go into the crumple zone, rather. So here is our first design. Basically, this is where the egg goes and it's covered with paper towels just for like a cushion effect. You stick the egg in here and then you buckle it up with like a little imaginary seat belt. And then on the bottom here, we have where the, it all happens. We have a straw that kind of acts as a spring um, so that when it collides with the ground, then it's not going to all go like where the egg is. Um, we have a few rocks just to like uh, make it go, uh, make the weight go down so it doesn't also affect the platform with the egg. <laughs> So here is our first drop test uh, from about a distance of 10 feet, and here's what happened. So our plan of putting rocks on the bottom of the structure so that it always landed down did not work. The ELS fell over regardless. However, when we checked the egg, it had significantly less damage than we had expected, only a hairline fracture. Regardless of our egg expectations, the egg was still cracked. In design number two, we need to ensure that the ELS does not take a bad bounce. No idea. Um, Here's the sketch of design number two. It is very similar in nature to design number one. Instead, we put straws all around the structure rather than just on the bottom, just in case the design manages to flip over in the middle of the air. The dimensions of this design are 10 inches by five inches by six inches since we added another set of straws. So we multiplied the height. Um, the mass is 0.91 kilograms, and the crumpled distance is still 3 inches, uh, expecting that it will land on the bottom. Other than that, there are no other changes to this design from design number one, as design number one was almost successful, but we just needed to tweak it a little bit, so hopefully this design will be successful. So here is our final prototype for design number one. Um, we have a seat belt here and we're, we just secured the egg inside. Um, we can show the inside right here. We have a little like cushion uh, and that's the egg all secured up. And reattach that. And now the basics of our design, we have just straws surrounding it in like this like rectangular prism form. On the bottom we have uh, some rocks uh, giving it more mass. Uh, so that it always tries to la lay downwards and it doesn't like flail around. Uh, but we also have straws on the top just to secure it just in case it falls over in the process. Uh, but basically these uh, straws are supposed, according to the law of conservation of energy, supposed to mitigate the um, fall or the egg from falling and 
groundbreaking. So, let's give it a shot. Looking back at how I conducted this part of the experiment, I believe that there may be room for error. For the second drop, we let a different person drop the prototype, which may have affected the height, even though we had measured beforehand. Then, something unpredictable happened. <laughs> Humorously enough, the egg made a complete mess. It turns out that the addition of the extra straws did not help in our case. The reason for such a dramatic crack might have been from A, the person who was dropping it, B, the increased mass, or C, the impact of the rocks on the bottom. <laughs> Alright, so for our first set of calculations, we were trying to find the velocity of the ELS as it reached the ground. Now, we've established our variables for the mass of the system. We have 0.83 kilograms, the gravity constant is 10, and the height is 10 feet, which is equal to 3.05 meters. Then we create our LOL chart showing the before and after. Before, we have a ton of um, gravitational potential energy and after we have all the kinetic energy right before it reaches the ground. Uh, the system is the egg slash ELS, and then there's also the earth and the ground that are involved. And we go on to calculate uh, using the basis established in the LOL diagram. The equation for gravitational potential energy is mgh, and the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Thus we plug in the values and we get V is about 7.810 meters per second. In this next line of business, we're trying to find the change in momentum of the ELS. In design number one and design number two, we have two different masses, so we need to solve for both accordingly. In uh, design number one, we have a mass of 0.83 kilograms, and the velocity is the same in both of them. Basically, change in momentum is equal to impulse, so impulse is equal to force times time. Now, since we don't know an exact time for either of the falls, we need to change the equation accordingly. Force times time is the same as mass times change in velocity. And since we have established the change in velocity in our mass from the variables on the left, we can successfully solve this equation. When we plug in the variables from design number one, we get 6.4823 newtons times second. And when we do the same for design two, we get 7.1071 newtons times seconds. So the change in momentum in design number two is much higher than the one in design number one. And for our final calculations, we needed to find what was the force applied to bring your ELS to a stop. Basically, we need to know the crumple zone distance, which was the distance from the egg to the bottom of the system, and that is 0.076 meters. Then we need to know the work formula, so work equals force times distance. Now using the variables that we have, we need to find the work. Since work is equal to kinetic energy, we can plug our known variables into the kinetic energy formula, and then we will get 25.313 joules of work. Now that we know the work, we can use this to find the force using the work formula. So plugging in the work and plugging in the crumple zone distance, we can find force which is equal to 333.066 newtons. Of course, there are other measurable aspects of this experiment, such as air resistance, which may affect the time falling. Additionally, you can measure different aspects of motion with the kinematic equations. There are multiple other ways to physically engage with the egg drop experiment. However, focusing on the aspect of impulse and momentum, the more change in momentum there is, or the more impulse there is, the more likely the egg is to break. Since impulse is equal to force times change in time, if there is more change in momentum, then there is likely more force. In conclusion, I don't think the ELS worked as well as we'd hoped, but it is a learning process and I think we might have figured out what led to this failure. As I mentioned, I think there was some serious room for error in the fact that two different people dropped the egg at slightly two different distances. Even though we thought that having two different people drop the egg wouldn't make a huge difference between the two drops, it did. And while we cannot prove it is the cause for error, it is still a remarkable aspect. 
I also do not think that the addition of rocks to the bottom of the structure helped at all. I think that only increased the mass, which thus increased the impact in the end. And thus, I think while it seemed reasonable in concept that you would want the ELS to land on its feet, as you may, it was not successful in the end and caused more of an impact and more damage to the egg. I still do find it quite hard to believe that design number two broke more substantially than design number one because design number two had more protection and the straws don't weigh that much so it barely changed the mass between the two thus why I was confused. I think it might have had to do with who was dropping the system but we cannot be sure. I think that if I had to redo this experiment or make a next steps prototype then I would remove the usage of rocks altogether because I think that only increases the impact force which just makes the egg more prone to breaking, falling over, etc. Because while it made logical sense to put rocks on the bottom in order to stabilize the ELS at the time, it didn't work and we should have learned from that mistake. I really enjoy how this experiment allowed me to think about the mathematical considerations of building a prototype. It allows you to consider the materials you need to use in order to make a successful prototype that minimizes all forces going on the egg. And while our prototypes demonstrated in the videos didn't necessarily work or necessarily were designed for success per se, we have learned in the process what constitutes a good and safe ELS. On a concluding note, thank you so much for your time and hope you enjoyed.